So here we are for the Barney Boxing Barber. I've got former IBF featherweight champion of the world, Lee Selby with me. The Welsh boy. I love the Welsh, I love the Welsh. How are you doing tonight? I'm, I'm not bad. And are you do the better half of you as Welsh too? Yeah, right? yeah, my granddad was Welsh. Lovely. We've got family from Pencoid, Bridgend, and uh, my heart's there sometimes. And when they beat England at something, I'm very, very happy for them. I'm, so am I, that makes two of us. So I'm not far from Bridgend myself. So. Yeah, we're basically related. <laughs> no, listen, I want to talk to you about that illustrious career because British, Commonwealth and European, that's a great accolade to have. Yes, um, it was a, a, a massive achievement and, and a dream that I've always dreamt since a young boy. Eight years of age, I started boxing. And that was, that, was, that was the main goal. And like, only, only I could see the dream. Not, not many people believed in me, but I believed in myself. St stuck, stuck with it, put in the hard work and luckily it paid off. I think um, towards the end of your career, I would have loved to have seen you in with a Frampton, a Kike Martinez, um, you know, some of them big boys that were just still coming through. I would have loved you to have stuck around and had some of them mouth-watering fights. Um, to, to be honest, that's part of the reason why I st stuck up every way for so long, because those, those big fights were always looming. You know, I, I boxed Josh War Warrington towards the end of my career and definitely at the end of my uh, February career. And before the fight, I, I signed a contract to fight Carl Frampton. So if I had to beat Warrington, I would have wanted to fight to um, box Frampton. And again, Kid Galahad, you mentioned earlier, he, I think he's an exceptional, exceptional talent. We, we've helped each other prepare for fights on, on numerous occasions. Yeah. And to be honest, he, he's one of the, the best I've shared the ring with. And I've shared the ring with many world champions. Yeah. Yes. I, off camera, I touched uh, on a Leicester lad and you fought Randall Monroe. Yeah. Randall was coming to the end of his career. What a fantastic guy. A bin man by day, a fighter by night. And he uh, he made the best out of what he was doing at the time and he had a great career. Oh, he, he was a great fighter. Um, luckily, like I told you earlier, I caught him at the back end of his career. I was just coming up, boxing for the European title in my hometown. It was all against him, boxing Cardiff. I, I got the win, and um, not many people know, but early on I boxed on, on Brendan Monroe's um, undercard. I was like one of the first fights on. I was the away fighter again. I, I got the win. Then when I, when I went back to the changing rooms, he was there, and he, he had sort of like an aura around him. You could see he was, he was like a, a champion or a champion in the making. And like everybody in the dressing rooms were like, it was just all, it was like the Brendan Monroe show. And it was, it was great to be a part of it. And, I, and like who was to know that later on down the line, I was going to be up against him. Yeah. Yeah. What do you think of the white collar, the unlicensed scene? Because I think boxing's boxing and it's got a place in the sport. Boxing is boxing as, as long as it's as long as like the safety measures are in place, which most most seem to be. And for me, that, that's the main thing. The boxing got to be safe. What do you think of the BKB? Because that's an organisation that's going places. They've just got a new platform where they're going to be, you know, in in people's televisions. And it's growing and growing and growing as a sport. You've probably seen some lads down there in Wales that have challenged themselves. It's vicious, bloody sport, but a lot of the lads are being drawn to it. It, it. You say it's a vicious sport. It's not much different than boxing, but like you do get those superficial injuries, like the cuts and, and the blood, because obviously your, your, your hands are, are not, not wrapped. Um, there's a good Welsh boy, Dan Chapman, who I'm a great friend of. He's helped me prepare for some of my world title fights in the gym, Spiring. He, he's, he's a world champion. Bare Knuckle Boxer now. My, my good friend Jamie Cox, who's here with me now, he's just signed up to box Bare Knuckle. And the offer was made to me. But um, it was a, a luxurious offer too. But being a, being a former world champion, it's sort of like, people would look at it as if it like discredits your, your professional boxing career. So for that reason, and again, my, my father said that I'm not allowed to do it. That's why I turned it off. Tell me about the highs and the lows of your career, because tell me about the lowest point of your career where your mental health was challenged and you felt like walking away from the sport or things didn't go well to you. What did you hang on to that got you through those dark times? So boxing it, it is a, well, they say it's the loneliest sport in the world, and, and I agree with that. And I don't think, well, it's a fine line. I, I'm not sure if the wins actually make up for the losses because the losses are so bad. And they built up at such a high than that, than that loss. And there, there's been um, a, few, a few occasions where, well, one in particular, I was defending, no, one defender of the world I moved up and wait, I was challenging for another title. And, um, well, it, it was tough. I can't really go into it because I've never spoken to him before, but it was yeah. tough to get to the fight. But luckily yeah. I got to the fight. I won it unanimously and um, I put it behind me. But it, that, that little blip in my, in my life and my mental health could have changed my career yeah. totally. But luckily I, I just 
just stuck with it. And an old um, saying of mine, like, tough, tough times don't last, but tough people do. Yeah. And that's what sticks in my head all the time. I totally agree. And my motto is keep punching. And I tell everybody out there, no matter what your situation, it's only temporary. And you can turn the corner and keep punching. And you can still get out of life what you want. That's it. And another, another quote of mine, one of my favorite rappers, Tupac. Um, after every day at night, there's a, there's a bright day after that. Yeah. And again, that one always sticks with me. And another thing I tell myself, when, when times I had, no matter how hard I'm feeling or how low I'm feeling, there's always so many worse off. Yeah. And that's what gets me through anything. Have you got any advice for me? Because I'm fighting to help men keep fighting and I'm raising awareness for men's mental health down there in Cornwall and beyond. And I'm 55 this year and I'm still punching, I'm still fighting. Well, just keep, well you look great. You're, you're talking great, so you, you can't be doing too much wrong. And, and another, my, my, my um, brother, he's here too. You, you want to get a word of him? You know, he struggled, struggled massively with his mental health. Like, I don't know if you're going to, but I'll just yeah. tell you now quickly. But like, he's like attempted to commit yeah. suicide on yeah. numerous occasions. Yeah. Tried to drown it out with um, yeah. drink. Yeah. Like alcohol and drugs. Yeah. So he, he, he knows what it's like to go through them dark times. Your brothers, and I'm guessing you've always had a good relationship and your mates are looking on each other. Have you been up and down the pair of you before? We've been up and down. More downs than that, but you know, that that's brothers too. So you must have sparred with each other when you were kids. Hundreds of times, hundreds yeah. of times. And like, it's funny, when, when we were young, really young, it was like competitive. And then he got to an age, say 15, 16, 17, he took over. Because then that, that's when I was out on the streets doing stuff when I shouldn't have been doing. He was in the gym training and he took over. And then he went on to like, to be on the GB team. He got the best medal haul from Wales yeah. as an amateur. And um, and then when he got to like the, well, when he turned professional, that's when he started doing the things that I was doing when I was younger. And I sort of flipped it around. That's when I pulled through and got on top again. You're 36 years old now. I don't look it, do I? No, you look well. You're a pretty, you're a pretty boy. I look about 40. You, you still look like the baby-faced assassin to me. It must be the fresh air down there in Wales. Easy paper round, I think. <laughs> Your brother must have done your paper round for you. But what, what's for Lee Selby now? Because obviously, you know, you're, you're here now at the boxing and you're giving a bit back to the sport. But have you got kids of your own? And what, what do you want for your family? Yeah, so I, so I got a young family at home. Um, two children of my own and a stepdaughter. She's 15 next week, but I've been with, her, with the mum since she was like two or three. So basically three girls at home. Um, I'm, in, I'm in the gym three days a week, doing like one-to-one -one boxing. I'm training a few amateurs. One of those I brought along today. And um, I've also trained a pro, so I got my pro license, pro trainer's license. Train, training a, a decent pro in Wales. One of the best Welsh prospects. And that's it, just trying to keep in the sport. There's a lot of guys out there and they start to do well in the sport and they get a bit of money coming in. Yeah. But because they're young and naive, they, you know, they get uh, the hanger honours and they don't save the money wise. They, what do you say to a lot of them young pros coming up with the money and as it comes in, you know, what should they be doing really in the sport? So, so you, you got to be selfish, to be you got to think about number one because nobody else thinks about you. So you, you just got to be, especially in boxing, you got to be a bit selfish. Yeah. And me and my brother are perfect examples. So on the way up, my brother, he was in the GB, town, um, GB boxing team, earning thousands of pounds. And he, we both grew up with no money. So we, he went one way. He thought, oh, I like this money, I'll spend it. He was blowing the money every month because he knew he was getting paid the following month. And he blew it. Me, where I was the opposite. Again, like I said, we had no money going up. I thought, I thought the opposite. Oh, I don't, don't want to go without money again. Yeah. So I, I kept, they kept, they yeah. invested, invested, yeah. and um, now I'm okay. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks for giving the time to talk to me. I know you're actually scoring the card here yeah. tonight, but thanks for coming down to Chippenham and getting involved. Yeah. And you know, uh, best wishes in the sport. Lovely to meet you. you. Uh, love to Wales and everybody there when you get back to paradise. Uh, take care and keep punching. We're in the boxing with Lee Selby. Nice one. Thank you.